Okay. Uh, this is Richard Russell's Zoom session for scenarios one and two. Um, we already had the Zoom session at six o'clock. I neglected to hit the record button, so I messed everything up. So I'm going to um, conduct a session by myself. And then, um, but I do want to note that the entire team was involved, um, Leanne, Christina, uh, Christian, Deanna, and myself. So, Team Tiger, um, we knocked out the uh, scenarios one and two, and I'm just gonna kinda go through and summarize what we all stated pretty much in accordance. So, um, here we go. All right, so scenario one was focused on learning communities. And um, the synopsis basically says that we are reintroducing vertical articulation in the concept of PLCs to our staff. Um, how will we encourage teachers to work together with one shared vision for the school? And how do you ensure that the positive changes in your school are sustained? Um, so going back to the beginning, um, reintroducing vertical articulation um, and the concept of PLCs. So in summarization, we all pretty much agreed that it was really important to emphasize the PLC, that is a professional learning community. And um, Chris said things like keeping it simple, going back to the basics, that the message needs to be um, clear, and that um, you know it's we're professional, we're learning, we're we're learning for life. We are a community. It's all stakeholders that needs to be involved. Um, but teachers need to feel that you know they they are being heard, and that you know just like all of us, you know, happiness and uh, comes from um, you know being involved and being treated like you are a professional. So uh, vertical articulation being reintroduced. Um, well, I think it needs to be organized, uh, set dates, calendar, got to get on it. Uh, Bi-monthly plan I would do um, <clears throat> really focusing in on the content uh, with the vertical um, meetings or the vertical articulation meetings. Um, Learn your is the importance of learning from each other. Why would you want to learn from, you know, teachers above your grade level or below your grade level? Um, I think that's really important to get, uh, I guess, experience and um, strategies. Uh, just just any kind of information you can learn from somebody else. And having different perspectives is gonna could could possibly get you to the um, next, I guess, growth step before you or for your students. But um, I specifically talked about differentiation. How you can, you know, if you're thinking about your students in your classroom, you have below students, on students, above students um, for their their learning. Um, you got to make growth for everybody. Student growth for everyone. Proficiency is just not enough. You know, grade level. Learning is just not enough, and you got to push those kids who are above, and you got to uh, really support those kids who are below. And um, you can really learn from if you're, you know, for example, a third grade teacher, you can learn from a second grade teacher on how to, you know, um, get to get those below kids moving to the right direction and close that gap. And if you're a third grade teacher and um, you got your your above kids. You know, you're high flyers and you don't want them just sitting there all year, you know, um, doing that thing where, you know, oh, we have the high flyers supporting everyone in the classroom. Yeah, that's great once in a while, but they still need to learn and they still need to be pushed, you know, because they're in third grade doesn't mean, um, you know, they're just going to learn, get a year's growth or even um, anymore. So uh, you can definitely learn from if you're a third grade teacher, you can learn from that fourth grade teacher about strategies and how to differentiate for you and push those kids, you know, with those, with that similar content. 
and um, you know, get that scaffolding going for everybody in your classroom. So hopefully everyone in the classroom can, can make growth and exceed growth. So um, moving into how do you encourage teachers to work together? Again, uh, treating them professional um, and being consistent, following through. Uh, how do you ensure that positive changes in your school are sustained? Um, we talked about check-ins, giving surveys, um, uh, having lead teacher meetings, to um, really check in with those <clears throat> those leaders, those grade level leaders, and uh, test the climate, test the climate. Ask ask those those leaders, those teacher leaders, empower them with you know questions and and um, you know ways to to build that climate and that happiness you know throughout your uh, those grade levels and um, yeah check ins surveys keep that sustainability so um yeah so that was basically uh the scenario for uh i mean scenario one focus on learning communities moving into scenario two focus on learning cultures and sustaining culture okay this is a situation where we're talking about what essential elements should be part of your new evaluation system how would you get staff members to support your new evaluation system how will the new evaluation system be used? So this is a situation where you have to, you come in as a leader, leaders come in, administration comes into the school, they are giving their, their state evaluate, they're using their state evaluation tool. Um, they're getting some information, but not everything they want. It's not as effective as they want. They, uh, so they, they're implementing a new or adding on to with a, another evaluation system and to, to get to measure and to get the, uh, the data that they want. So um, what essential elements should be part of your new evaluation system? Well, we, it was started off with things like uh, professional development, teacher empowerment, disposition. Um, but we added things like uh, preparation, going into a classroom, doing your observation, and seeing that the teachers are prepared, that everyone in the building is prepared and not just trying to you know, fly, off the, fly off the handle with, right, you know, um, just off the seat of their pants of what, what they want to get done that day. Um, I mentioned uh, student growth, really important, differentiation, uh, using or collecting, analyzing, and using data to modify instruction and um, how often you do collect that data um, measurement. <clears throat> um, so those are some of the elements that we talked about in our meeting. Um, how would you get staff members to support your new evaluation system? Uh, Leanne talked about having peer evaluations. Um, we talked about getting staff members to support by invol involving them in the creation of the system. Um, and you know, making sure that everyone is heard and making sure that that if everyone is involved, um, that this, it could be effective. And not just implementing something here and there, having that follow through, giving that feedback. But even before that, Chris mentioned that, you know, um, teachers need to have that awareness. Um, so we talked about training staff uh, all staff and everyone is going to be evaluated that for for the data you're trying to get training them beforehand um, having that maybe even professional development with it um, so that they can they know what to expect and what the tool looks like and and what, what will be measured and what they need to prepare for to be successful for themselves and for the students in the class um, then uh, closing out we talked about how the new evaluation system be used um, strategically, we talked about it being very strategic, having a plan, um, giving feedback to to teachers for for their personal growth, which will then affect student growth. And um, again, talking about that those below on and above students. That's this is what I keep I keep harping on. That's that student growth. And uh, hopefully that this this evaluation tool that we're implementing will will measure and uh, really identify the teachers who are being effective with um, 
using data and collecting it frequently to to modify instruction and to give student feedback and to uh, try to make that growth with all the students within their class. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else that we kind of talked about. Yeah, so buy-in will be will be really big with an evaluation tool. Uh, Deanna talked about that if there is an implement, implementation of a new or something new, anything new, but an evaluation tool that's new, uh, she mentioned that it won't be successful if you just throw it in the middle of the year and there's no follow through and there's no, there's no uh, training and there's no, it's just like, here, here's what we're doing. And, you know, it, it won't be that effective. Uh, teachers won't buy in. They won't be prepared for it. And your data will probably be skewed because of the lack of buy-in. So instead of getting that quality information that you want, because people are working as hard as they can, it will, it will probably be skewed because of the fact that they will not be working hard and they won't be prepared for it. And, you know, just like that student in your class who you, you can't measure whether he understands or not because of the fact that he or she is not given that effort, then this is the same kind of idea. So, um, yeah, that's it. So that's uh, scenarios one and two. Again, I apologize for um, not hitting the record button. And I will uh, send this out to everybody and get it, get it done. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you.